Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. What's up, Elevate Church? All right, I love it. Full house tonight. Well, cool. You know, I wanted to say, um, normally I don't dress in this this, this getup, but I feel more like Western cowboy, Texas kind of a feel. That's the theme for tonight. So if I, if I look strange to you, that's the reason why. Um, so I wanted to share with you guys, I realized recently that when when I was a child, I loved, loved, loved being a student. I wasn't the greatest student. I definitely didn't get straight A's. Um, I wasn't this prodigy, gifted child. I wasn't horrible. I mean, I didn't get F's and D's and everything. I was, I was like average. I would say like a little bit above average. But what I loved about being a student is that I can learn from somebody. Did you guys love going to school when you were younger? Whether it was, no, <laughs> whether it was whether it was high school, junior high, elementary school. Raise your hand at, at some point. Tell me if you enjoyed being a student. All right, I got half of the audience at least. Okay, half of you pay attention. The other half pay attention as well. Um, so I can remember the coolest teacher I ever had. His name was Mr. Ward. Um, and this guy, let me tell you, he was just, he was so smooth and cool. It's like having a celebrity be your teacher. If Okay, if you can imagine, it's like having Keanu Reeves as your teacher. That's how cool this guy was. I wish I was Mr. Ward. Um, and he did this thing where he, he liked to encourage um, the students to, to learn. And so let's say if we were learning about Christopher Columbus, if you brought a compass or something relevant to the lesson, um, he would walk by your desk and he would say, extra credit. And it was, it was so cool. You just, you needed that extra credit statement. And so me being the, the, the person that I am, competitive person, I was like, I'm going to get that extra credit. And so uh, this was in junior high, I think. I can't remember junior high or high school, but um, I was into ninjas. You know, I was weird at that time. But I, I had this book called The Art of Ninjutsu. And I was like, if I bring out this book, he's going to tell me extra credit. And so I, I put it in my backpack. I put it right on the left side of my desk because I knew he had to pass by it in order to, he had to pass by to, to get to the front of the, um, the classroom. And so sure enough, the day came, he walked by. And he was like, Frank, extra credit. <laughs> and it was so cool. Oh, man, you had to be there. If you've never had a cool teacher, I'm sorry, go back to school. Hopefully, there's another Mr. Ward, but I, I loved Mr. Ward. Um, so elementary school, so the scariest teacher I ever had, uh, this was Mrs. Lampy. Now, Mrs. Lampy, so you know when you go to school, and it's you, when you go to orientation, and you get your cute little, like, ID card, and you get your list of teachers, and then you wonder, you know, is this going to be cool? I'm with my friends and all these questions. So I had no idea who Mrs. Lampy was. And I had to, I believe I had to ask my sisters. I was like, who is Mrs. Lampy? And they're like, oh, no. No. You don't want Mrs. Lampy. She, she's mean. She's strict. If you do anything, man, she's going to get you. And I'm this little kid freaking out. I was like, I don't want Mrs. Lampy. I don't want to go to class. So I have this picture. If you look on the screens, so this is Mrs. Lampy. <laughs> so <laughs> if you, if you've seen the movie Matilda, it's like, it's like that ward lady on steroids. She could probably eat me alive, you know, if she wanted to. That's not even a real smile, you guys. That's like, that's fear in your eyes. I'm not going to move for Mrs. Lampy. Um, but uh, it, it turns out, you know, Mrs. Lampy, she was strict, but she wasn't, she wasn't crazy. She wasn't Matilda crazy. And it, it turns out she actually, she told me that she liked me. She appreciated me because I was obedient. Um, but I have to say, hands down, my favorite teacher of all has to be God. There's nobody that compares to God. I have, I've learned from God. I've laughed. I've cried. I've been frustrated. I've been angry. God has dropped the bomb on me. He's taught me in every single way, every single capacity. Hands down, God is the best teacher that you will ever have. Amen. And so... One lesson that I've learned from God that I want to share with you guys is that it's better when we're together. 
And we're going to take a little bit of time and just kind of understand what that means. Um, but for starting off, if you think in the beginning of time, God always did, did things in groups. You know, when he created the heavens and the earth, he did it with the Holy Spirit and his son. Right. When he um, as you go through the days of creation, he would separate um, the waters from above and the waters of below. When he created land, he also had vegetation. He had flying creatures, swimming creatures, land creatures, and humans. And when he made humans, he had man and woman. He made peanut butter and jelly, and that's one of the greatest snacks you can have. God has always kind of done things in groups. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at what it means to be together. And so I came up with my own definition and kind of brought a bunch together. If you look at the screens, the way I define together, I have to pull it up, media. Everybody look at the back and say media. Unless I didn't give my slides, it's all right. I have it on here, I'm prepared. So, the way I define together is to be in one gathering, to be in union, to be in proximity. So we're all together right now. We're in this room, we're close enough, you can, you can smack a person next to you, you can smell them, you can laugh at them, you can look at them, don't do any of those things, but we're all together in this room. Make sense? So, I think the best way that you can understand something a little deeper is you have to look at the complete opposite of that thing. And so the opposite of together is alone. And so the way that I define alone is you're separate. You're apart. You're isolated from others. You're not around. It's all of those things. And what's interesting about being alone is that you can be in a, in a room filled with people and you can still be alone. Has it ever happened to you when you're at home, you're at work, you're with friends, and you're just, you're checked out. You're not there. You feel like nobody even understands, knows where you're at. You're gone. So there's a story in the Bible where Jesus calls Peter. It's in the, uh, the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 3 through 8. And so it starts off, it says, they have it on the screens? No screens. Okay. So he, he got into the boat. He is Jesus. So he got into one of the boats, one belonging to Simon. Now, Simon was also called Peter. So when you hear Simon, just think Peter. So the one belonging to Simon. And he asked him to put out a little from shore. He asked him to put your boat out a little from the shore. And then he sat down, Jesus sat down and taught the people from the boat. So when he had finished speaking, Jesus turned to Peter and he said, put the boat a little deeper in the water. He says, let down your nets for a catch. Now, Peter answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I'll let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled for their partners and the other boat to come up and help them. They came, filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. And so we're going to pause right there. You have to understand the context or the, or the character of Peter in this moment. This is a low, low moment, right? So you have this fisherman. He's obviously good at what he does. And he's doing his thing, minding his business. And then a rabbi comes up, Jesus. And he comes onto his boat and he asks them, can you put your boat out a little, a little into shore? I want to teach these people something. And so, you know, Peter, having respect for rabbis, he says, okay, I'll do it. And so Jesus, he sits down, he shares a message. And you know that it was Jesus, since it was Jesus, it was an amazing message. And so after all of that, Jesus looks to Peter and he says, send your boat out into the deep. We're going to go fishing. Now, remember, Peter's an expert and he's been fishing all night. Him and his crew have been working hard, doing what they do, and he knows that there's no fish out there. But he complies to Jesus, probably after hearing the message. He's like, there's something to this guy. So let me just go ahead and try this. And so he does that. And when he goes out immediately, he gets a huge catch of fish. It's not, it, you, he can't even fit it in his one boat. He needs to call his friends fit, to fit two. And when they get all the fish on both boats, they're about to sink. Now, I'm sure, without a shadow of doubt, Peter has never seen anything like this in his lifetime. And so at the climax of this moment, Peter tells Jesus, go away from me. I'm a sinner. It's like he's saying, 
Get away from me, Jesus. I'm not good for you. It's not good that you're around me. I can't be with you. And there's times in our lives where we can convince ourselves that we're not good enough for great things, for great people, for, for anything that seems beyond us. And I want to start off by telling you that that's a lie, that you can't see it that way, that you have to understand from the get-go, it is always better to be together. And so with that statement, Jesus comes and he says, uh, he says, Peter, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. And so they pulled their boats up out of shore, left everything and followed him. And it's not an easy thing to do. If you think about Peter, you know, that probably that was his, his business passed down from his father. And before that, it was passed down from his father's father. And so this is a business that he ran, that he loved. How many of you can just up and leave your career today? It's not an easy thing to do. So you have to understand, it's hard. But Peter decided that he's going to do that. And I think a lot of us are like Peter, where there was one point in our lives where we were doing our own thing. Jesus came along. He rocked our world. And we decided to leave our old ways and to begin to follow him. You know, that's why a lot of us are here at Elevate Church. You know, we decided to follow Jesus. One of those ways is coming to church and learning more about him. And so what I love about Elevate Family Nights like this is that we get to come together and we get to celebrate that, but we get to do life together as well. And so now, so you remember how I told you that I, I, lo I love being a student, right? Okay, so God's my favorite, favorite teacher. I love learning. It, it was funny that you mentioned that, Pastor Anthony, when you said you get a different perspective because I, I, I'm doing a little bit of wordplay here. So I got a new perspective. Um, so I love the book of Isaiah, uh, and, and even especially chapter 55. That's where I'm going to read this next verse. I, Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. And so it says, so, so before I get into that, you know when you're learning from God that it's, it's simple. It's always better to be together, right? Um, a three, I forgot the verse, but like three chords are not easily broken. Iron sharpens iron. All of these things that are very, you know, it's, it's basic. You already get it. But when you're learning from God, you know that he goes deeper he goes wider, he goes longer. And so there's something very special about this that I'm going to share with you. So Isaiah 55, verse 8 through 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my, uh, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, oh, you know what? I wanted to tell you guys something that was kind of funny. <laughs> Should I go back? I'm going to go back, Jack. Okay, I'm going to go back. Hold that thought. Um, okay, so going back to discounting yourself. So it's funny because whenever, whenever I speak, um, I'm just going to throw it out there. My wife doesn't like to be here because she always thinks I'm going to tell something about her family or about her. And this time, I'm not going to talk about her. I won't even look where she is, so she can't say anything about me. But, um, yeah, you know, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty comfortable with myself. Um, I've learned, I just come to accept it. There's times where I'm weird. I have quirks. I'm really grateful that I have a team that appreciates me, accepts me. I'm thankful that you guys love me. Um, but uh, I just, thank you. Thank you. I've just, I've come to accept it that I have my quirks. And um, I'm, although I'm pretty comfortable, there's, there's one insecurity that I have, you know, whenever I speak. And it, it used to bother me, but I figured, you know, I just don't even care anymore. I'm just going to throw it out there. Um, so in order to explain it, I have to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm really grateful that God has given me the body that I have. The reason why I say that is because I can pretty much eat whatever the heck I want to, and I don't change. Um, you'll, you'll find me in the back office eating, like, three bowls of cereal, um, eating pizza, whatever leftover cookies we have. Every single staff member knows if you have leftover food, give it to Frank because he will eat it. And it's true. I will eat it. I, I, I figure you're not fool until it hurts. And so um, this is one of the perks of, of the body that God's given me. The other thing, so it's, it's a catch-22 because when it's winter, um, my wife loves to be around me because I'm just so warm. When, when it's cold, she can just cuddle up alongside me. I'm an instant heater. It's the funniest thing. Like, I can walk outside. It can be zero degrees, and I won't care. I'll come out with a T-shirt, um, with socks. I just love it. I love the cold. But in the summer, 
when you have a body that just gets hot in the snap of an instant, it's not cool. I kid you not, if you were to call me and I'm outside, after a minute, I'll start sweating right here on my elbow when I'm holding the phone. And I didn't even know that you can sweat right there. And so I say all this because one of the things I'm self-conscious about is I'm just going to say it. So I'm the type of guy that I'll sweat in my armpits. And there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm just going to throw it out there. And so for the rest of this message, I'm going to be talking like this. <laughs> right? No. Like I said, I'm just getting over it. So what uh, – and you could think it's, it's a little silly thing for me, right? But if you allow yourself to think that you're not good enough – that, that it, and it's the strangest thing. Like, I'll watch Pastor Mauricio. I watched Isaac, um, what was it, last, a few Wednesdays ago when he spoke, and he had this T-shirt. When you're, when, you're that, when you're that Pitts guy, gray is a no-no. You cannot wear gray. And Isaac had this gray shirt, and he was doing all, like, these things. I was like, man, I wish I, I, wish I could just, like, raise my hand. But you would, you would just see a darker circle right there. <laughs> and so what really helped me is, uh, it was, do you guys know who Ed Young is? Okay, so Ed Young, he's this pastor in Texas, and he's got this church of, like, a schoolian people. He's really cool. The first time I went to go see him, I thought he was like, man, this guy's, like, fly. He's got all these, these nice outfits. I mean, he's hilarious. He's, he's outrageous and all those things. But one day, I discovered, I was like, wait a minute. He's a pit sweater, too. <laughs> and I realized it. The reason why he changes his shirts is not because he's got styles, it's because there's stains there. And so... It was, man, it was like, when you're, when you're a pit sweater, you look for other pit sweaters so that we can just come together in misery. Um, but I figured that if Ed Young can do it, I can do it too. If he can speak to a bajillion, squillion people, then I can speak to people as well. And so, said all that, yeah, said all that, don't disqualify yourself. So now going back to what we were saying, perspective, right, of God. So there was a whole tangent. I told you guys I'm weird and quirky, but anyways. Okay, so God's ways are higher. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so when you think about being better together, um, a lot of the time you think about proximity and about connection. But what I love about God is that being better together is also about completeness and wholeness. If you think about it in the sense of you need to get your act together, you need to be whole and complete. So that's the next side that we're going to look at. And there's a story in the Bible about a rich young man that Jesus meets. And this is in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 through 21. How many of you guys got your Bible today? Amen. Okay. So verse 16. So in someone, so this rich young man, you got to know he he was a good man. He was well, not a good man. He was a good looking man, probably. He was probably fit. The rich young man had it all going on. He's everything you want to be, but you can't be. And so he goes up to Jesus, right? And he says, teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may obtain eternal life? And so Jesus is already knowing where this is going. He knows the whole situation. He says to him, why are you asking me what is good? There is only one who is good. But if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. And so... Jesus already knows that this guy follows the law. He does all the rules. He does everything right. He's like the perfect guy that everybody loves that you probably hate because you're not him. But he goes and he says, he continues. The guy says, after he says, uh, keep the commandments, then the rich young man says to him, well, which ones? And Jesus says, well, you know, you should not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbors as yourself. So the young man said to him, All these things I have kept. What am I still lacking? So Jesus says to him, You know, he has that, that look, that serious look. He says, If you wish to be complete, if you wish to be complete, I'll say it again, if you wish to be complete because before we were thinking about proximity and compatibility but being together is also about being complete he says if you wish to be complete go and sell your possessions and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me i think that many of us christians we're like this rich young man right we we come to church 
and we, let's say, we read our Bibles. We attend weekly. Um, we worship when it's time to worship. We pray when it's time to pray. We do all of these things so that we're within proximity of Jesus and that we can connect with him. But the fact of the matter is that we're not complete because we're not applying what Jesus wants us to. See, you can worship, but if you don't apply the words to your life, what's the point? You can read the Bible, but if you don't apply what the word is telling you, what's the point? And so that's what Jesus is getting at. He's telling this guy, you have it all. You followed the law. Yeah, you have that. You've done everything you're supposed to. You have, you believe in me. You have your ticket to heaven. And for a lot of us, I think that's what we, we, we hold on to as our trophies, right? We have our salvation card, you know? And once we have that, that's all we need. And then I go to church and I do what God tells me to do. And, and that's it. You see, but Jesus is telling this man, he says, no, there's more. There's more to this. He says, so you have a problem. I'm going to send you on a journey. You're like an incomplete puzzle. He says, when you go on this journey, you're going to find that puzzle piece. And your journey is selling everything you have. And once you do that, you will be complete. And after you do that, come and follow me. And so a lot of us, we know what we're supposed to do, but we don't do it. We're living our lives being incomplete, being surrounded by others, but we're not here. We're not with God. And so, okay, now I know what I'm going to say too. So the, I have, I have three points for you guys. I'm going to, um, I'm going to have them put up the first one. So number one, we all need to make a choice to be better together with Jesus. I'll say it again. Number one, we all need to make a choice to be better together with Jesus. And honestly, that's hard. Because in order to begin to be better together with Jesus, you have to admit that you're out of order. And nobody wants to have a sign and say, hi, my name's Frank and I'm out of order. You know, I, I'm jacked up. Nice to meet you. You want to come hang out with me? You know, my kids are crazy. My wife is crazy. My finances are crazy. You know, nice to meet you. Come to Elevate Church, right? Nobody wants to be out of order. The hope that we have and the hope that we hold on to is that we have a great repair man. And that's the key. Jesus wants us to come to him saying that I'm out of order. I need you to help me. That's what the young man had as his problem. He had an issue, but he didn't want help. So my wife and I, so I'm talking about my family. It's all right. When I get at home, I'll be in trouble. But I'm going to say it anyways. Um, we, you know, we, we talk about our Buard family. You know, we take inventory and we say, you know, you know what, shoot, we're out of order in this area. You know, our kids are out of order. Our finances are out of order. You know, we're out of order. Um, it, it, it sucks to do that, but we have to get to that place where we're real with ourselves and we say, we need to change. You know, and we need to have God come in and, and fix whatever it is that we have going on. You know, and it's such a, a, such a blow of pride for you to say that I'm wrong. And time after time after time. Um, but you know what I love about it? This is okay. You know, it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be off. It's okay to be broken. It's okay to be jacked up. Go ahead and look to your neighbor and say, hey, I'm jacked up. <laughs> look to your other neighbor and say, it's all right. I already knew it. <laughs> you know, Elevate Family Night is a time where we can be real, come together and say, you know, I have problems, but I'm not going to stay with problems. I'm going to follow Jesus. And I love that I can be next to you and next to you. And I can look at you and how you do life and how you have the standard. And I can model that as you're modeling it in Christ. You know, that's the point. You never want to be that person in the chair that's, that's like, nobody wants to say hi to me. Nobody wants to know me. Nobody wants to do anything. They're all fake. They're all perfect. That's not what we're about here at Elevate Church. We're real, we'll, we're raw, and we love you to death. So I, I wish that, 
you know, before I die, I wish I can have faith like the... You, have you guys heard the story of the Roman centurion, the Roman soldier? I wish I can have faith like that guy. I'll, this is the, the last story I'll read to you. So this is in Matthew, uh, chapter 8, verses 5 through 8. We'll start there. And so it starts off, it says, uh, And when Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, imploring him, asking him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, fearfully tormented. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. So, see, you got that Bible. I like it. I like it. But turn it off. <laughs> so, you, it's all right. It's all right. Just fill in the room with God's word as, as we wait. You see, you see, we're all messed up, Angie. It's all right. We're all messed up. I have, I have a repair man for you. Good thing it was me and not Pastor Mauricio because I'm gracious. <laughs> so um, the Roman centurion, um, I don't even remember what, I, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so, so Jesus was blown away by this. He, uh, he, he told everybody around him, I've never seen faith like this in all of Israel. And this, this guy, so it's, it's just a Roman soldier. It's not like he was some religious leader. He didn't grow up knowing about, you know, God. He didn't have his Torah. He didn't have any of these things. He's a guy that heard about Jesus, that, that honors God, that respects God, that loves God. And he said, you know what, I'm going to give this guy a chance. He's a guy who had it all together. So he goes up to Jesus and he says, would you please heal my servant. Jesus says, yeah, you know, I'll go with you. Let's go and do this. And he says, he says, no, I'm not worthy to have you in my home. This is not about proximity, Jesus. You don't have to be there to heal him. All I need is for you to say the word. Just say the word, Jesus. Say that word, and I know that he will be healed. And that's what I love about Jesus, because some of us, including myself, we've been in those times where we feel like we're so far away from God. You know, whether we've run from him, whether we've lost our way, you know, some of us, it, it, it feels like, like our, our, our marriage is so far gone from hope. Our children are so far gone from hope. Our finances are so far gone from hope that there's not even a, a chance of recovery. But the thing about being together with Jesus is that it's not about the proximity. All you need is that word, that one word, and in a moment, there's change. As long as you apply, you get that encouragement, you get that instruction, and then you run with it. And that's what I love about our God. That's why it's better to be together. And so, number two. So, number one, I'll recap. We all need to make a choice to be better together with Jesus. Number two, simple. Admit you need help. Number three, follow him. And that's it. One, two, three. Doesn't matter what's going on. The 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 um the guard didn't say, you know, I have an emergency, you need to go right now. He just said, just give me that word, and I'll know. And so today, for some of you, Jesus has that missing piece, the piece that you need. And he's ready and he's waiting to give it to you. But he's just looking for you to say, Jesus, I need help. And so, you know, in, in a moment, I'm I'm gonna I'm going to um, give those an opportunity who have never never met Jesus, never never knew about Jesus, have never dedicated their life. I'm going to give you an opportunity to meet Jesus. But, but for all of us right here, I wanted to give you an opportunity as well. If you have that thing that feels so far gone, I want you to bring that thing to your mind. And, and I'm going to ask everybody to close your eyes right now. And... Bow. and if you have that one thing that you feel is so far gone, today I'm here to give you a hope and I'm here to tell you that it's not that far gone. It doesn't matter where it is, how far it is, Jesus can still come and he can restore and repair that thing. So whatever that thing is, I'm going to ask you right now, if that's you, go ahead and raise your hand and I'm going to pray with you right now. I see those hands, awesome. Okay. Well, Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that today we can come here and we can learn that it's better to be together with you, God. You know, we have your children here 
you know, who maybe they've, they've, um, they've lost hope. They've, they've convinced themselves that, that this is not going to get repaired, that you can't fix this, or, or that they've told you, you know, God, you got to leave me because I'm just so jacked up. But we're here today, God, to believe in you again, to hope in you, and to declare that there's not anything that's too big or too far gone for you to come and fix and restore for us, God. And so I pray right now, as you see those hands, as you see these people's hearts, that you would begin to lift them up, encourage them. Holy Spirit, that you would begin to fill them with joy, knowing that the best is yet to come, Father God. And we bind the plans that the enemy has, whatever he's been doing to stop, to close doors, to open the wrong doors. In your name, Jesus, everything is done according to your will, God. And so we thank you for what you're doing tonight. We thank you for what you've done. And we thank you for what we're about to see, God in these people's lives, Lord. And in that same attitude, Father God, we want to give everybody here, or anybody here, that's never given you, Jesus, a chance. And so if that's you right now in church, at Elevate Church on a Wednesday night, and you said, you know what, I've never really given Jesus a chance. I've I've never really said, Jesus, I need help do whatever it is that you got to do and followed him. Tonight's your night. Tonight's your opportunity. Don't let it pass you by because you don't know when you're going to get another chance. You don't know what tomorrow's going to be like. We're not promised and we're not guaranteed another day. And so if you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, go ahead and raise your hand right now. I see those hands. Awesome. I see him. I see him. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. I love it. I love it. Okay, for those of you that raised your hands and for the rest of you that already know Jesus, go ahead and and follow after me as I lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my life. Jesus, I thank you that you are now my Lord. I give you my everything. I ask you to forgive me of my sins, wipe away my past failures, and birth in me a new life right now. I believe in you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And I will follow you, Jesus, every day of my life. We love you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Awesome. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below, and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.